a mile from Westminster, half a mile from MI6. Long gone tenements that may have held dark secrets. There's no sign of coronation buildings now. They were unloved, fell into disrepair, and were eventually knocked down. But not before they were the focus of a child abuse inquiry by Scotland Yard. Now, 35 years on, an officer familiar with that inquiry has come forward to tell its story and how it came to a sudden and mysterious end. The operation targeted a number of properties in South London, but particularly a flat in Coronation Buildings. The officer described how over the course of three months, a small team of detectives watched the flat. A caretaker helped them install a video camera, which showed boys being sexually abused by men. It was a trade that linked London's paedophile infiltrated care homes with the House of Commons. One of the men caught on camera was the Liberal MP Cyril Smith. Another, a senior member of Britain's intelligence agencies. There was evidence of abuse by police officers too. The surveillance team had made witness statements, known as MG11s, and details had been logged with C11, Scotland Yard's intelligence unit. One evening, they made their move on a property in Streatham. Officers burst into a sex party and arrested Smith, among others. We've been told they were driven north of the river and brought here to the old Cannon Row police station, within sight of Downing Street and the House of Commons. But this did not set in train the prosecution that officers had imagined. Far from it. Newsnight has been told that the duty sergeant on that night was stopped in his tracks and pilloried for even contemplating keeping Smith in custody. To the astonishment of those who witnessed it, the MP was released. Days later and south of the river, another astonishing twist when the officers reconvened at their base. That base was here on the first floor of the Met's Gilmore House, just a mile from Coronation Buildings. We've been told that the squad was called together here and addressed by a senior officer they'd never met before. There was a row and it ended up with detectives being ordered to hand over all their evidence. Notebooks, photos, videos, the lot. They were given a reassurance that Smith would no longer play an active role in public life. A reassurance that ended up being hollow. And there was a warning. Speak again of this operation and you will be breaking the Official Secrets Act. 35 years after the operation at Coronation Buildings, with the renewed focus on the secrets of the past, politicians offer whistleblowers protection. But in this case, that cuts little ice. Our source won't go on camera. He has given his account to the BBC through an intermediary to reduce the risk of being identified. But his story has been examined by Clive Driscoll, a Scotland Yard detective who investigated child abuse in Lambeth and later prosecuted the murders of Stephen Lawrence. Mr Driscoll, you've examined these claims. What do you make of them? Well, I think that I looked at them as, as I probably would have done when I was a police officer. And, and on the balance of probabilities, you would have to say they appear very credible. Certainly the timing and uh, the type of, of allegations that are made uh, are one that I'm sure the Metropolitan Police would take very, very seriously. If you take all of the information that appears to be out there together, it does look like um, collusion with um, police officers and other agencies to prevent what is a straightforward criminal um, case. I, I personally can't condone that. I think it's wrong. Of all the allegations made against Cyril Smith since his death five years ago, this appears the most egregious example of a cover-up involving police collusion. 
time and again what we've learnt more recently is that uh, a number of police officers investigated Smith uh, up and down the country and those investigations were, uh, were quashed and, and, and officers were told uh, to stop investigating him that Smith was being protected and he was being protected by some fairly powerful people and, and I think he was being protected because he knew of other paedophiles in the networks in which he operated and had he been uh, prosecuted then I think uh, those other people uh, would have been named by Smith and, and that's why they ensured that he was never put before the courts. What would you say to officers who are still frightened by the threat of the Official Secrets Act who have been threatened in this way to come forward. But never forget that detectives are fathers, husbands, sons, daughters. Um, they are, they have their own families. It's incredibly difficult. If, if, if you felt that by coming forward and just telling the truth that you might have your livelihood taken away from you or you were still maybe, you know, taken to prison, then that's very difficult. If it's true that there are officers that want to come forward but they are f feel inhibited by the Official Secrets Act and if what, that, what the general information that appears to come from them is true, it is disgraceful. It is, um, it is just wrong and it would undermine our democracy. We put the main allegations to Scotland Yard weeks ago but the Met has refused to comment on the details. However, a spokesman said the Forces Anti-Corruption Command is investigating allegations that police officers acted inappropriately in relation to non-recent child abuse investigations. It wants witnesses to come forward. Unlike many tales of child abuse, the story of coronation buildings is not one of victims being ignored or disbelieved. This appears to be a case where police knew what was going on. They'd seen it with their own eyes, yet they were ordered to stop. If true, this is an open and shut case of a remarkable cover-up.